and we're here at the Montenegro Pavilion. Hi. Hi, welcome. Welcome to Montenegro. And uh, who are you? My name is Dado. I'm an informant here along with my colleagues and I'm going to show you our pavilion and explain you a little bit about Montenegro and all we have to offer. Over here, you can see where Montenegro is located. It's in the Western Balkans area of Europe, right across Italy. And over here, we have the capital, size, and population of Montenegro. And you so can there's a lot of flight connections? Yes, so there's a lot of direct flights to Montenegro, especially during the season, during the summer. With the Ryanair or EasyJet and everything? A lot of different uh, air, air companies. And from Dubai, it only takes five hours to reach Montenegro. So there's a Fly Dubai direct? or Yes, so during the Emirates? summer we have Fly Dubai. They have direct flights to Montenegro. If there aren't any direct flights, you can always go with Dubai, from Dubai to Istanbul, and then from Istanbul to Montenegro with Turkish Airlines. All right. Over here is the main theme of our pavilion, Blessed by Nature, accompanied by a great quote from the English poet Lord Byron, and some information about Montenegro to bring the idea closer to you. All right. There's a lot of uh, mountains, right? Yes. Actually, Montenegro means black mountain because all the mountains in the area are pitch black because the forests are evergreen, so they have this lush green color. And there was a story that a long time ago, sailors who were sailing around the coast of Montenegro, they didn't know what Montenegro was called. It didn't have a name. But looking up at the mountains, all they could see was pitch black forests. So they gave it the name Black Mountain and later turned to Montenegro. This over here is our interactive wall. You can place your hand on any of the yellow icons like this, which will activate an animation that adds information for the various locations, first in Arabic, then in English. And for example, this is the Biogradska Gora rainforest, which is protected and untouched since 1878. And it's a very special forest that has various different types of trees, animals, and plants. And it's so special and beautiful that we dedicated this light infrastructure as a tribute to that forest and its lavish and enchanting beauty. You can see over here. Who's the designer? And, uh, Simetico the is the designer of this pavilion. And Montenegro is 70% forest, which is why it's very important to us to dedicate a part of, of this pavilion to, that, to those forests. And this is really fully touch? Yes, yeah, so all the yellow icons you can interact with. For How example, does it work? So you just, uh, there is a sensor that, no, that uh, notices your hand when it's near any of the yellow spots. And then it activates an animation that is played by uh, a projector, and then you can see the information and animations that it has to show. For example, it's designed by Montenegro designers. And it's it's Metrico was the designer of P Pavilion. Right. And over here we have Lake Skadar, which is a very special lake that has over 270 different bird species. This Dalmatian pelican being one of the more famous ones in the area, which is why it's also the symbol of that lake. And if we go over here, we have the old olive tree which is 2,000 years old, and it's a very special tree that is protected by the government and still alive and healthy to this day. And there is a story that a long time ago, families who had feuds would come under this tree to reconcile and make peace. So it became like a national symbol of peace. Over here is a very famous place in Montenegro called Tara Canyon. And it's the second deepest canyon in the whole world. It's 1,300 meters deep, and it has 14 rivers flowing into it, and over 40 cascades. So it's a very special place. And this over here is another canyon. In this case, Canyon Nevidio, which is one of the harder canyons to pass in Europe. And its name, Nevidio, actually means not seen, because once you enter its narrow passages and you look up at the sky, you cannot see it. And this is the Long Beach in Ulcin which, as the name says, is a relatively long beach. It's 13 kilometers long and 50 meters wide. It's the longest beach on the Adriatic Sea, and its sand is very beautiful and also healthy because it's rich in minerals, so it's used in some special medicines for specific illnesses. And the last one is this Declaration on the Ecological State of Montenegro, which was signed in 1991 the year when Montenegro became the first ecological state in the whole world. And it's basically an agreement that the country made that we will do our very best to protect all our nature, keep it safe, green, prosperous, and sustainable. So is uh, one of your businesses is uh, like tourism or...? Yes, so one of the main sources of income in Montenegro is tourism. The second is agriculture, because we have plenty of different natural resources and beautiful places for tourists to visit, enjoy, and vacation in. Over here you can see on this big screen some of the locations that we have to offer. This is the Biogradska Gora rainforest that we mentioned before. 
it's a very beautiful rainforest. You can see various different shots. This is a black lake, also a famous place in Montenegro. And you can see from all these videos, you can see that Montenegro has plenty to offer in its natural beauties. That's a very big screen. Yes, this, we call this the Zen area because it's a very good place to just sit back, relax, and immerse yourself in the beauty of Montenegro. Over here are the natural treasures of Montenegro, and you can see the various species that we have in the area and how we protect and preserve them. Starting with this one, it's the long-snouted seahorse, which is found in the Adriatic Sea. It has 360 vision, and when they decide to lay eggs, the female can hold up to a thousand eggs at a time, but it's actually the male that does the birth process. So she passes them on to the male, and the male gives birth to the babies. This is a Lovchen bellflower found in the mountain of Lovchen in a specific part of that mountain. And it's a very special and very rare flower. And because it's so rare and beautiful, some volunteers wanted to help protect it from wildfires that happened during the summer. So they created this system of water balloons that will hang right above the flowers. So when the fire reached the balloons, they'd pop and the water would fall on the flowers, saving them from the flames. This over here is a golden coral, which is found in the Bay of Kotor. And the golden coral is very special, so the country decided to uh, help save it by not allowing ships to drop anchors near the coral or fishermen to use fishing hooks because they can get caught up in the coral and rip it apart. And for this reason, the coral became so expanded and massive that it's really helping the ecosystem grow and be the water to be safe and clean for the fish. Here we have the Dalmatian pelican that we mentioned before that's found in Lake Skadar. It's actually a symbol of that lake. And our country created this fake nest in the area so that the pelican can lay their eggs in them and be safe in them while in the environment because the lake can sometimes get flooded and usually destroys their nests. Do they this know helped that them. it's a fake nest? Yes, they, they, they know that it's safe. They know that it's not made by them, but they use it uh, regardless to be safe in them because again, like I said, the lake gets flooded and it can destroy their nests that they made. So this helps them. And this over here is a golden eagle, which is a very special bird in our country. It's actually on our national flag. And the golden eagle has two sides, the beautiful and the dangerous side. So you see the beautiful side, the dangerous side actually, is that it can fly really, really high. It's usually found in the higher mountains of Montenegro. And it can take down an animal twice its size. But the beautiful side is when a male and a female eagle come together and fall in love. They do this thing we call a wedding dance, where they hold their claws together, they fly up in the sky, and they dance around, declaring their love to the people. And it is said that once the eagles marry, they rarely ever part ways, as they're usually very loyal to each other, so they stick together till the end. And so they can take down like a cow or something. I'm pretty sure they're very, they're very tough creatures, but uh, again, very, very romantic. So we'll give them a pass. And over here we have the brown bear. And the brown bear is like any other typical bear you'd find in the world. In our country, it's found in the mountain forest. And they are a bit peculiar. So How many do you have? Bears? Yeah. So there's a couple of them. I'm not exactly sure on the number. But they're usually found in the mountain forests. And they're a bit peculiar. So some scientists wanted to see why. You see, they placed some trackers on a few bears to see where they went, what they ate, and what they did. And they found that one of the bears actually enjoyed swimming more than walking. And another bear, they wanted to test out in a special location in the forest. So they laid out food like a trail for the bear to follow. But the bear was very suspicious of all of this, so he didn't eat any of the food. Until they put down the cake and the candy, and that the bear immediately went to the location. And the last one is the black pine which is usually found in the Tsernapoda forest, but also scattered throughout Montenegro. And it's a very tall tree. It can grow up to 47 meters high. And it's very thick, has a dark green color, appearing almost completely black from a distance. And here comes again the story that I mentioned about how Montenegro got its name. You see over here, this is like a shot, a different perspective of Montenegro that you'd see from the coast. And this is actually what the sailors would see when they were traveling to Montenegro. And all they could see was pitch black mountains because of all the dark trees. One of them, the black pine, which is how, again, we got the name Black Mountain, Montenegro. You can see the story over here as well. Here you can see Montenegro, the black mountain. So um, when you talk about being an ecological country, you're serious. Yeah, actually over here you can see a quote from the Declaration on the Ecological State that we, uh, that we signed. See, it's in 1991, and it's again an agreement that the country made that we will protect all our nature, keep it safe, green, and prosperous. All and here, nature. Which is why, yes, all our nature. Which is why we invite you to join us on our sustainable journey and hopefully visit Montenegro soon. Can anybody just come and live there? 
Uh, actually, there is a gold citizenship visa uh, currently active. If you go to Montenegro, you buy a piece of land and make a small donation to the country, dependent on the plot of land that you buy, you can actually be valid for a passport from Mon Montenegro, so you can become a citizen. How many years do you have to wait before you can get approved? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, if you're currently in, uh, in Dubai, in United Arab Emirates, you, we ha actually have an uh, embassy of Montenegro in uh, Abu Dhabi. So you can actually go and ask them or send them an email. They can ask, answer more questions about that, more precise questions. But uh, I think it's a relatively uh, short process, but it has to be checked with the Because it's, it's the dream of most uh, human beings to live in nature. Have uh, a harmony with the ecology and everything. Then What's happening in this little store there? This is our gift shop and all the items you see here are actually handmade and eco-friendly. Excuse me, sorry. So starting from these we have handmade bags. Who's the designer? So there are different designers. So this is the sticker, it's a designer. We have over here also, these are 100% eco-friendly, made with uh, w w material and these are magnets as well, also made eco-friendly. We also have over here these children toys. These are, on e these are ecological games. This is like a puzzle game that helps children use their minds more creatively and think outside the box. And uh, while playing with this toy and uh, making all these puzzles, they also learn about Montenegro because each image is related to something from Montenegro and teaches them about it. And over here we have these 3D printed accessories, so you have earrings, bow ties, bracelets, all made with zero waste material and a machine, a 3D printer. Who's doing that? So these, you can see over here, they're made by Miju Jewelry. It's this lady over here. And oh. this is a message that, he sh that she has for her Need items. zero waste, let me print your jewelry. Yeah. Cool. Very cool this, initiative. This is uh, These are bracelets. And it's... Solid? Yeah. Good quality? Good quality, it's zero waste. all way. these effects when I turn them in the light. Yeah, and they're zero so waste, so they're, while you, if you buy them, you protect the nature nice. while doing so. And here, you, you're giving out some stamps? Yeah, here we have the stamps. You what can does see it look it. like? It's over here, you can see? It. Yeah, what happens when you, can you stamp something? Okay, there it is, in the back. This is the stamp, this is the stamp you get yeah, when that's you fly in from outside the Schengen, right? Because uh, you're in the Schengen. Yeah, yeah, if you have a Schengen visa, you can visit Montenegro freely. And right. over here we also have one more thing. It's related to the business side of Montenegro. You can place your hand above this sensor over here, so it's COVID safe. You place your hand right here. You can control this cursor and you can see how Montenegro is improving in its areas of mobility, opportunity and sustainability. And for mobility, Montenegro is improving by making it easier for travelers to travel to Montenegro. Uh, one of the ways we do that is adding another airport. So we used to have one in the capital, now we have another one in Tivat. So this increased the influx of tourists. And another important thing to know about Montenegro, you see, Montenegro is strategically located in Europe. So if you do business in Montenegro, you're not doing business with just Montenegro, but with the whole vicinity. And yeah, for many friendly neighboring countries. Yes, uh, so the Western Balkans consist of six countries. We have Serbia, Albania, Bosnia, Kosovo, North Macedonia, Montenegro. And they're all very friendly countries working together to make the world not, a better place. Not competing. No, not hardly. competing, working together. So the working Western together. Balkans is an initiative to work together and be a better country. Here we have sustainability and now opportunity. And for opportunity we show a few business sides of Montenegro, like uh, the GDP, income tax, which is 9%. And we also show how we are helping young entrepreneurs run businesses in Montenegro by, being, by creating a friendly environment for startups, which is helping them try and make their businesses grow in Montenegro and the vicinity. How do they come in there and do the startups? Is it only there for are Montenegro plenty, people there, or from so all the world? There, there are options for uh, people outside Montenegro, there are options for uh, foreigners, but there are plenty of like programs built for people to like compete with ideas and the winning idea usually gets a financial help from, the, from various different organizations and that usually ends up in being a successful company that is trying to change a, a certain part of Montenegro. So you have like climathons, which are like uh, hackathons, but made for like climate change, and you have hackathons as well, and plenty of different like uh, programs. All right. How has it been going the the event for you? 
the experiment? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's really perfect. We have plenty of visitors that are visiting and discovering Montenegro because, again, because Montenegro is such a small country, not a lot of people heard about it. But this is exactly why Expo is a perfect and a great event because a lot of people learn about it and hopefully visit and see for themselves the beauty that we have shown them here.